Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Moita Gupta, and today I'll be speaking to you about my quality improvement project, which was the introduction of manual vacuum aspiration for surgical management of miscarriage at Northampton General Hospital. Um, so we started this project in November 2016, and it is at present ongoing. I did this along with my colleague, Dr. Ahmed, and it was done under the supervision of Dr. Ami Shukla, who's one of our consultants. Right, so just to give you a bit of a background, the management of miscarriage is broadly divided into three um, options. That's conservative, let nature take its course, medical management, or surgical management. Um, the current practice for surgical management at Northampton General Hospital is that the procedure is done in operating theatre under a general anaesthetic. And uh, the procedure would either be slotted onto an existing gynae list or they would go to main theatres on an emergency list. Um, so this obviously has implications in terms of uh, patient waiting time, which directly impacts on patient satisfaction. Uh, because the patients have a general anaesthetic and have to then be on the ward for some time, it does mean increased ward work, increased work for staff. It can lead to bed blockage and of course has financial implications in terms of theatre needed and equipment required. So what if there was a simpler procedure available? And in fact there is. It is manual vacuum aspiration. This is... Um, done with the help of a syringe which is handheld uh, to create suction instead of an electrical source which is what we currently use and this can be done as an outpatient procedure. Uh, manual vacuum aspiration obviously uh, has multiple advantages. It's a quicker procedure and it can be done in a small setup. It, there's no need for an operating theatre. It uses a local anaesthetic rather than a general anaesthetic so it's safer. Patients have shorter stay and can be discharged more quickly. The kit is um, quite a simple kit and it's easily available and of course much cheaper than what we are using currently for uh, the general anaesthetic procedure. Therefore, there's a financial advantage as well. And this is not a new procedure. It's been around for many years uh, and it has just gone out of use in the UK. Um, so we looked at the evidence behind the use of this procedure and um, NICE guidelines clearly state that for surgical management of miscarriage, where clinically appropriate, women should be offered a choice of either manual vacuum aspiration under local anaesthetic or surgical management in theatre. The RCOG curriculum is also, um, it also states that this procedure uh, has a high safety profile and it is affordable to the NHS and we need to improve access to this in the UK. The Association of Early Pregnancy Unit as well has the same to say. Um, there are many articles and many studies done on the effectiveness and uh, efficiency of this procedure. Uh, one of the studies done by Dalton et al. showed that the costs were more than twofold higher if the procedure was done in theatres rather than as an outpatient. And they showed a saving of almost $1,000 per case. Um, it is, as I said, not a new procedure and actually many hospitals in the UK are already using this procedure in, um, along with the procedure under general anaesthetic because it cannot be done in all cases for surgical management but there has to be um, a judgment made as to whether it is clinically appropriate for that patient to undergo the procedure as an outpatient. Um, it's interesting to look at the financial implications of the introduction of this procedure. So just to look at this slide, we did an audit which showed we do roughly about 25 to 30 uh, surgical management of um, miscarriage, all under general anaesthetic per month. So um, if we were to do 10 of these procedures as outpatient procedures, that is using MVA, it would amount to about 120 procedures per year. So the cost of MVA procedure is 109 pounds six pence, while the cost per procedure of doing the same procedure in theater is 950 pounds. Therefore, the cost for 120 procedures, that is a yearly cost of doing these, 
as MVA is 13,087 pounds, while 120 IVAX would cost us 114,000 pounds. We do get, the, get paid the same amount, whether the cases are done as an outpatient or under a general anesthetic. And if we calculated the cost um, for 120 procedures, all done electively, which would generate 612 pounds per case, uh, we would be paid 73,440 for these procedures. So the net yearly gain, if the procedures, that is the 10 procedures were done as MVAs per year, would be 60,352 pounds. While if we did all the 30 procedures as EVACs, um, the net loss would be 40,560 pounds. So that's quite... Um, significant savings, as you can see. Um, so just coming to the aims and objectives of our uh, quality improvement project, um, just breaking this down into the SMART objectives. So our aim was specifically to offer MVA to a specified target population at Northampton General Hospital. We were going to measure our outcome by doing staff and patient surveys, use of audit and the impact of offering this procedure on patient journey. Um, we hope to make all our targets attainable by having a clear timeline to help keep this project running on time. And of course, we have experience and data from other units, which is very encouraging. Um, the quality improvement project is relevant because as you've seen from the evidence, it is being recommended by the premier institutions of UK and studies have shown repeatedly that it has a positive impact on patient experience and can reduce current problems such as bed blocking. And there's a clear, clear financial gain for the trust from this. And time related, as I said, we are going to follow a clear timeline for the project. Um, so the PDSA cycle, that was our plan, do, study, act. At present, we have spent majority of our time in planning of our quality improvement project, which we broke down into the following. So we looked at the evidence, uh, which I've talked about, and we also looked at the practice of the other trusts, which are very encouraging, and there are a lot of papers out there. Uh, next thing was to do a SWOT analysis. So just looking at the strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats of this project. So the strengths, again, not to repeat myself, but similar things such as increased options for patients, um, release of theater time, less equipment, less staff required to do the MVA, um, leading to quicker discharges for the patient. And of course, um, it can be offered as a very quick emergency procedure. So it fits in with the seven day working ethos and it has a clear money saving benefit for the trust. And it offered us the opportunity to um, give patients more options for surgical management and you know reduce theater time reduce bed blockage and also the opportunity to save some money for the trust and there is a definite um, uh, evidence that this has potential to be a nurse-led service um, which is already being done in many trusts of course the weaknesses with introduction of any new service is that we need to source our resources there is a certain amount of training required for the staff and all patients will not be suitable. And we would hope that uh, more and more patients would be able to have this procedure as uh, the clinicians experience in doing the procedure increases. We did not identify any threats from this procedure. We did a staff survey to uh, gauge the team attitude towards the introduction of the service. So we carried out a survey in October, November of last year and 15 forms were returned and we had very good results. Um, all the people we to, um, gave uh, the survey to were in favor of introduction of MVA and they agreed that it would enable to free up beds and reduce in workload as well. And 100% um, of the people agreed that it would improve patient experience by reduction in waiting time, avoiding of a general anesthetic and quicker discharges. There were also some free text comments, mostly positive, that we should be offering this as a matter of choice or option to patient. 
and the fact that people felt that it would definitely help to speed up treatment for patients with early miscarriage. Some uh, people were concerned about other things such as complications regarding heavy bleeding, etc. But uh, studies do show that um, um, the complications are in a similar range as a planned, um, uh, as a procedure done in theatre. We also did an audit looking at the patient journey currently. Uh, so, uh, we looked at records of patients who underwent um, surgical management of miscarriage in October last year. This was a total of 18 patients and from admission to having the procedure done, the waiting times varied widely from 30 minutes up to even 10 hours, 49 minutes. And the timings from having the procedure to discharge of the patient again varied from 2 hours 25 minutes to 11 hours 13 minutes. Of course, uh, some patients would have had the procedure very late in the evening or in the night and that would have definitely led to an increase in discharge um, time for that patient. So, um, more uh, aspects of our planning cycle were um, after the patient survey and looking at the patient attitude and looking at the patient journey, we drafted a business plan, which we have submitted. We also came up with a patient protocol and guideline to be followed for this procedure and designed a patient information leaflet. We have uh, been looking at resources and we have now been able to um, uh, find slots on existing outpatient clinic lists where we would be able to carry out this procedure for one to two patients per week to start with. Uh, we have been able to speak to the company which makes the MVA kit and these would be available to us as and when we need them. And we are now in the process of organizing staff training and we have a staff training day organized for August this year to train the staff in the use of this kit. So just looking at our project timeline, in February we drafted our business plan and it's been submitted um, to the consultant body. It is still to be discussed and finalized. And we were hoping that we would go through a gynae governance and trust governance procedures um, in April and May. We've had some delay with that and um, it should be done in the next couple of months with the next meeting coming up. We have, uh, as I said, looked at the resources and we are going to be using uh, the existing clinics and the patients are going to be added on to existing clinics to enable us to do up to three to four procedures per week to start with. Uh, the staff requirements have been looked at and we are hoping to be able to source staff from the adjoining gynae emergency clinic. And as I said, we have uh, uh, talked to the company which provides these MVA kits and they should be easy enough to obtain. We are in the process of designing MVA packs to make the uh, clinic run smoothly, which will contain, contain consent form, the guideline and information leaflet for the MVA procedure. The staff training is uh, organized for August this year and we hope to start offering this procedure to patients after that, hopefully from September to October uh, into 2017. At that point, we will be um, uh, monitoring our project to look for any problems which would bring us to the study part of our PDSA cycle. So we will again do a patient feedback survey. We will do also a staff survey and repeat our audit cycle to look at the impact on the patient journey. And the final part of our quality improvement project will be to implement changes if needed based on our findings and recommendation from the audit and surveys. So the learning points for me from doing this quality improvement project were that it's really important to set realistic targets such as time scales and looking at the logistics of the task. And bigger projects such as mine which required introduction of a cervix definitely require some amount of groundwork such as looking at staff attitudes which we did with the use of the survey, look at the infrastructure availability uh, uh, regarding resources needed and also important to find seniors who would like to be involved in the project and would be able to support. 
um, it's important to also be aware of what sort of help is available. So for instance, putting a business plan together is not easy. So it's maybe possible to get help from finance managers in the trust. And it, it could also be beneficial to uh, seek help from consultants with special interests in that particular project. And again, to be mindful um, that there can be extra issues and extra steps that need to be navigated. So for instance, for uh, introduction of a new service, there are certain steps such as clinical governance and trust governance, which need to be um, navigated before the service can be introduced. Thank you.